Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Today I'll be sharing how I paint with markers. I'll be painting this illustration here. I did a quick digital color study so I can follow it as I'm painting. And if you want to follow along, you'll need markers, of course. I'll be using Copics. I also have two brown marker skin tones, which I use once in a while. I've had this Copic chart for so many years and it was designed by Sandy Alnock and it's even better than the original charts since it places similar colors next to each other instead of the original numerical order. I've already transferred the sketch to the final sheet. I'm using the Bristol Manga Paper by Sakura and I've used this brown pencil by Faber Castle. And don't use watercolor pencils on this step, or the lines will smear once you start painting. I already did a few tests of the copy colors, similar to the ones from my digital sketch. Since I don't have exactly the same colors, I will combine a few to get a similar tone. So I start by painting the skin with the E000 or Pale Fruit Pink. I'm using the wide nib since it releases the ink more evenly and it doesn't become too saturated on the first strokes. I've noticed that the brush nib makes it easier to blend but it also makes the ink a bit more saturated and I can't really explain that but if you try Copic markers it's something you'll notice. I'm going over the first layer with the Ivory Color by Promarker. I normally use the E50, also called Eggshell by Copic, to add a yellowish tone to the skin, but I'm out of ink, so I'm using the Promarker instead. To add shadows and blush, I'm using these three colors. I start by laying down a base of E00 for the blush. Now I add a bit of R12 and blend it with E00. Still using E00, I paint all the shadows and use E01 for the darker areas like near the blouse and sleeves. I use this brown for the hair. This one is a bit tricky to paint because the umbrella is in between, so I'm using the brush nib to control the thickness of the strokes. This red 
red is a bit too pinkish for my taste, so I might get a darker red or one that's a bit more orange in the future, but for now this one will do since we'll paint with color pencils later on. And to make a large area more even, you just need to paint over the previous strokes a bit and the ink will blend nicely. Mushrooms were so tricky to paint because of all the white spots and when I'm painting detailed areas like this I use the brush nib to kinda outline all the limits of the color and then paint all the rest, blending the edges of the line. And these areas can be a bit intimidating but you just need to be patient and take all the time you need to paint them. I went over the previous layer with a wide nib just because it's faster, but unfortunately this red doesn't really get darker with more layers. I repeated the same process on the other mushroom. Since I already have a color study to follow, I saved time by painting all the other red areas at once. To make the shadows on the dress, I like to use a light neutral grey color and I still haven't refilled this marker so I don't have much ink on it and in this case I'm only using the white nib because that's the side I place down when I store the markers in the box and it had more ink than the brush nib because of that. For the fairy and moth wings I'm using this super light yellow green. Also going over it with a super light green just because I feel it makes the colors look richer this way. I like to mix colors so now I'm using this bright yellow green and a less saturated green. I'm the biggest fan of brush markers just because you can be really precise with them and I've tried markers with round nibs before and it's way harder to paint tiny details like these leaves. So for the leaves on the dress I'm painting with this boring G82 and then going over it with this YG03 to make it brighter but still not too saturated. And since all the leaves were looking the same and super boring I added a layer of BG11 on a few.
but since there was almost no difference, I added a stronger blue-green and I think they look more interesting now. For the grass, I painted a base layer with G82. And the brush nib makes it so convenient when you want to change the thickness without having to switch to the white nib all the time. painting a large area, just go over it a few times and it will look more even. It will also get darker, so you might want to use a lighter shade of that color if that's something that really matters in your case. to make it a bit more saturated and this is something you will need to do and obviously I use more ink by doing this but I personally feel like it makes the colors look richer just because you can see a bit more of each color on different places since it's not perfectly even so I think it feels a bit more natural but this is just personal preference for this area inside the mushroom, things are going to be a bit tricky for me this time. And this is the tone I'd like to get, more or less. And the color that would be perfect for this is the E41, since it's not too saturated. But unfortunately, I'm out of ink and I want to paint the whole illustration today, so we'll have to find an alternative. I'll be using the ivory color from Promarker and we'll paint a few layers to make it darker. The first layer is so light you almost can see it. so you can see it on the camera but I promise you it's making the color underneath a bit less saturated and this is also a really good violet to make shadows look less saturated and more interesting and I used it a lot when I was drawing manga and anime a few years ago and finally I'm adding a few more layers of ivory to blend everything nicely and make it a bit darker a bit of this bright yellow on the wings. And I'm using the same brown of the hair, the E35, for the brown parts of the wings. for the centers of flowers. I start by adding a layer of Y15 and then Y35. I use YG03 for the more saturated leaves. and YG03 
for the less saturated leaves. And it's the same color combination that I used on the grass. Then I use these two greens to get some more color variety. And I decided to add an extra layer of G82 because it was standing out too much. Then I paint all the other leaves using the same color combinations. the small lavender flowers with this blue violet. I was running out of ink on the brush nib so I switched to the white nib and again this is because I store the markers with the brush facing upwards and since they already don't have much ink on them it all goes to the bottom. Since I'm also out of E50 I'll use the brown marker ivory for the snail body. For the shell, I'm starting by using these two. And I know it's super yellow for now, but please be patient with me, as I'm still figuring out the correct shade that I want to achieve. I need to refill the Y26, so I'm going to show you how you can refill your Copics. And you just need to take out one of the nibs of your marker, like this. And just a quick notice, I think they made a mistake with the cap color of these new bottles because the ink color is the same but the caps look completely different. I don't know if they fixed it, but I just wanted to let you know in case you're wondering if the color is still the same. And you just need to insert the nozzle in the marker and pour a bit into it. I usually drop enough ink to wet the nib that's facing down and I will also add a few extra drops just in case. And these are their new bottles and they're quite nice because they have a longer nozzle but I prefer the old ones since they came with more ink which in the end were actually cheaper. Unfortunately I didn't notice the brush nib was already clogged with dry ink so it didn't come out as nicely and when this happens the marker will leave this weird and even texture uh, as if the paper can't absorb the ink so when this happens maybe try to soak the nib in alcohol for a while or you can even replace it with a new one but in this case I'm not really worried since I'll be painting with pencils over it. And it was too light for my taste so I painted over it with this darker yellow-red marker. And 
and it was still too yellow, so I just painted over it with E35. And yeah, the base painting is finished. For textures and shadows, I use these two round pencils. One is by Carandash and the other by Faber Castell. And I also use a few watercolor pencils by Stettler. And I also have this super dark brown Prismalo pencil by Carandash and this grayish brown too. I paint the face details with a dark brown use red for the blush. For the freckles I use a lighter brown. For line arts and darker shadows I use a dark enough brown and then use yellow to make colorful highlights. I then play around with different browns to make the shadows. I don't really have a secret formula for this, I just start by drawing the details with the dark brown and then try with the lighter ones to make the shadows. Oh, and I also paint very lightly with red on shadow areas to make them just a bit warmer. For the red areas, I like to make yellow highlights and then paint with two different reds. One of them is a bit more purple-ish, uh, just to make the tones more interesting. And then I add the shadows with different browns as well.
for the highlights I use this Copic Opaque White and you can use regular white gouache but I've had this one for ages so I need to get rid of it. I don't use the original brush since it's completely messed up now and it's too small for what I normally use. That's it, now I just need to scan the drawing and it's ready! If you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments and I'll do my best to help! I hope you enjoyed this video and I can wait to see you soon! Bye bye! And just a minute before we go, because today we're unboxing an order from Kiki Nordstrom and I'm so sorry if I pronounce your nickname incorrectly, but I'm really excited because I've been wanting to get something from her shop for ages. Okay, the packaging is so perfect guys, this is like receiving a gift. It comes with this little card, which has such a nice texture. Oh, and there's a lovely message on the back. I really like this little mod. Oh, and more cuties! It's a freebie sticker and a business card. Okay, the card is so detailed and it's really cute. And oh my god, guys, these are so pretty. Just look at this dear sticker. And I couldn't resist getting a bunch of sticker sheets because her illustrations are always so beautiful. This one features constellations and this one has lots of cozy things. I also got some small prints. I love how she paints landscapes. They come printed on a textured paper and this lighthouse print is so pretty and it's just perfect for summer. Another illustration of a forest and a river, and a cozy cabin and a fox. Everything looks so pretty and I just can't wait to stick these prints to my wall and to use the stickers on my journal. Thank you so much Kiki, everything is so lovely. And to all of you, thanks a lot again for watching and I can't wait to see you soon. Bye bye!